Here is the 2024 Toyota Tacoma SR5 in undergo. We finally get a refresh, more performance with a turbocharged engine or a hybrid, eight different configuration, more ground clearance. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and I'm gonna go over the pros and cons. The problem that I have with the refresh and comparable rivals going into the front, we're gonna get full LED headlight, daytime runnings and fog lights that's integrated into the lower part of the grill. There is a bit of an eyesore though. This lower bumper part here for the SR5 and the SR. I wish they didn't put that because if you're looking at the new Ford Ranger that I've done a review on as well, you don't have that eyesore. It looks a little bit more off-roadsy, even though clearance on this is up to 10.8 inches. The grille will get the horizontal lines that go into the Toyota emblem. The fenders flare out, and you get an air pocket on the side. Housed underneath the hood is the new iForce 2.4 liter four-cylinder turbocharged, producing 278 horsepower, 317 pound-feet of torque paired to an eight-speed automatic transmission, achieving 21 MPGs for the city, 26 MPGs for the highway. The reason why you want to go SR5 opposed to SR is you're going to lose 50 horsepower. You're going to lose 74 pound-feet of torque. That makes this kind of the sweet spot. You're going to get 17-inch wheels on both trims. Go up to the TRD Sport and it's going to unlock 18-inch wheels, which the Trail Hunter gets the bronze 18-inch wheels and bronze aesthetic throughout the exterior, which is kind of the sweet spot with performance, but then you will lose towing. The max goes to 6,500 pounds. Hybrid is gonna go down to 6,000 pounds. Payload will be more for the hybrid. Both trims will be over 1,700 pounds. The profile will stay similar to the old Tundra, and the suspension has been reworked, so it's gonna be a little bit more smooth. With a standard independent double wishbone front with electronically controlled locking rear differential, coil spring multi-link rear suspension, and the three trims that offer the optional adaptive variable suspension system or AVS is the TRD Sport, TRD Off-Road, and Limited Trim. The Trail Hunter has the off-road suspension that includes a forge multi-tube position sensitive coilovers with the rear remote reservoir shock and the TRD Pro off-road suspension includes the Fox Q53 adjustable internal bypass coil over and the rear will get the remote re reservoir shocks but it will include a one inch lift for the front and a 0.5 inch lift for the rear when you go up to the trail hunter you will also decrease horsepower but you will have the same configuration of bed so you'll have the five foot double cab or the six foot extra cab whereas the trd pre-runner will only option a six foot bed extra cab, LED taillights with a spare tire tucked underneath. TRD Sport, TRD Off-Road and Limited can be optioned as a hybrid or turbo charge, but when you go into the Trail Runner, that can only be a hybrid option. And the TRD Off-Road, TRD Sport and Limited will get the iForce Max, which has 326 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. The problem that I have with the refresh is just like the Tundra. They did just enough. When you're comparing this against the Ranger, it outperforms them, and they didn't increase anything in performance, in towing, or payload. And going against Chevy, the same thing, also GMC. So it's still one of the least in performance for all round capabilities. Plus we've changed the whole powertrain now, which makes it a question for longevity because it's a hybrid. But on the plus side, it's still a Toyota, which are known for hybrid technology. Quick release going into 73.5 inches, a depth at 20.2 inches between the wheel well housing at 44.7 inches. Power lumbar support for the driver, six-way manual seat adjustment for the front. Power seats start on the TRD Sport with option heat and ventilated with the soft tech seats. Heated starts on the TRD Pre-Runner. Headroom and leg room. The refresh gets a whole transformation in the interior, starting with storage in the passenger side with the Tacoma badging. You can option a six or 10 speaker layout when you go to the TRD Sport, which will also unlock a 14 inch screen that will be in the center. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, AM, FM, streaming Bluetooth audio, put it into reverse, and we have trajectory that expands. You can 
change the camera layout and you can take those lines off. Dual climate control settings will start on the TRD Sport as well as a wireless charging pad and you have kind of a his or her setup with USB 12 volts, a grab handle here and you can run the wire right through here so I like that, could probably fit a larger phone right through here. Soft tech around the gear lever and the key fob for the new Tacoma. Going to be a little bit more firm opens up into a pretty decent sized storage pocket and the steering wheel can be optioned as leather and heated for the sr5 with a digital gauge cluster that can be optioned up to a 12.3 on the sr5 that can go through an array of information for the driver including your settings and different information for the vehicle i like the two tier because it keeps the same style as the prior tacoma trd Sport will option a moonroof, and the TRD Sport can option a digital rear view mirror. Auto dimming rear view mirror starts on this trim, and the door panel has two armrests similar to the Tacoma. One touch up and down for the windows, and two tiers of storage with three beverage holders carved out. For the back seats, they can fold up at a 60-40 split, and you have a divider. And you can also fold them this way, where it'll fold more or less flat, and you got some storage in the back. Headroom for the back and leg room with storage only behind the passenger seat. Cup holders in the center with a 12 volt. No armrest here. The door is going to have the same materials found in the front, except you're losing one of the storage pockets, but you have three cup or beverage holders in the lower with the grab handle there on the side. Sliding into the center, the floor isn't flat. You're gonna be sharing some feet space but leg and shoulder space isn't that bad because it's cloth seats, but as you see, knee space is compromised as well as headroom. It's gonna be a little bit tight for somebody that's six foot three. 278 horsepower with 317 pound-feet of torque. It has the get up and go to maneuver in and out of this heavy traffic. The clearance is good. The sound deadening has been a lot better than the prior gen. The suspension feels smoother. We do have 17 inch wheels, so that helps. The steering is lighter. And the exhaust note will not sound like a V6, but it's not quite like a drone, so it has a unique sound to it. It's gonna take me to some pros and cons. Starting off with the pros on the refresh is I like the drive, overall it's a lot better. I like that you have a lot of trims. I don't necessarily like how it costs quite a bit of money to go in between some of those trims and some of those trims. Another dislike is you can only option a hybrid powertrain, which is the TRD Pro. So then the sweet spot lies on the new Trail Hunter because you can either go hybrid or this turbocharged engine. Another pro though, is you're getting an immense amount of power, especially when you're thinking of the SR because you're going to drop 50 horsepower and 74 pound-feet of torque. Towing up to 6,500 pounds, it's pretty good. It's at the best in class. Payload over 1,700 pounds. Moving in and out of lanes is gonna be easy. Clearance has also been increased up to 10.8 inches and the drive is a little bit more comfortable. The seats are basically the same as the prior. Let's rock and roll. Now, unfortunately, you can't do too much of that with a Tacoma, but because it's turbocharged, you can have some fun and you can hear some of the spit coming in. And some cons start off with the infotainment screen comes out of the dash, and yet the dash is pretty refined. Same thing with the gauge cluster. It just feels a little dated, even though it's new. Now they're optioning a 14 inch screen that comes out of the Tundra. This is basically the old Tundra with the Tacoma badge at more or less the Tundra pricing back in the day. Taking me to some more cons that you have to more or less go up to the Trail Hunter or the TRD Sport in order to get most of the features. You're really only unlocking performance when you get to this and the power lumbar support. Yes, you can get a 12.3 digital gauge cluster, but I mean, it's not like a big deal for me. I wouldn't mind having analog gauges for a Tacoma because Tacomas are known for longevity. And that leads me to the big problem that a lot of buyers are going to be questioning. Will the turbocharger hybrid powertrain last 500,000 to a million miles like the old Tacomas are known for? 
It would be nice if they do, but it's going to be hard. Only time can tell, obviously. And when you're considering the new Tacoma, the price increase, you have to increase even more in order to get the features. So unlocking any features really start on the Trail Hunter and the TRD Sport. You're not going to get all of those features in an SR5. Can't even option them. And as for competition, the Ford Ranger outperforms it with towing, payload, and performance. The same thing with the Chevy and the GMC. So when you're thinking we got a full refresh, why didn't they go that extra step? They did the same thing with the Tundra, and I'm so happy that we finally got a refresh, but don't just do enough. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, and Instagram. Leave a comment and a like, and I'd like to thank Gettle Stadium Toyota for giving us this 2024 Toyota Tacoma SR5 for our car review.